day two out here at the Dean Co. Uh, equipment auction. It has rained all last night. It was already muddy. It's going to rain more today, and it is a royal, royal mess. These big side dumps always go for a good deal. You get a better deal on a big one than you can a small one. There's more demand for side dumps this size right here. So these little trailers will go to a, a comp comparable price to that big one, but your per bushel cost, you're gonna get a steal on that giant trailer. I'm sitting in the cab of one of these European John Deere's, one of these John Deere imports. They bring these tractors in from the uh, European market. There's a little bit of differences between them and the ones here in the States. Uh, a lot of times they have really wide tires, which won't work with a row crop configuration. The tires are too wide, so you have to change the tires out if you're going to row crop with them. They'll have these lifts on the front, which is not common for the type of work we do here in the Southeast. You don't see lifts on the front of tractors. And then lifts on the backs are also different. You won't see a quick hitch on any of them. The main issue, other than having to change some of this stuff out, these tires, is because they're Europe, they're, because they're imports, they don't have the depth and the regen requirements that we have. And so these tractors are actually a little better than what we can buy. If you needed some grain storage, maybe, maybe you have a hunting club, something like this would be great. This trailer has a tarp on it. It's a huge trailer, has lights, has big, tires that go down the road pretty fast you can get in some unlevel areas without worrying about flipping the trailer over like you would on a, a trailer if these little tiny wheels you might not could go a place where you could get this you could get it to your hunting camp you could buy buck corn i sell corn to, to hunters and they usually come get three or four trailer loads during the season but with a trailer load like that you could get one and you could tarp it and keep it at your hunting club pretty cool twin hood set up on this international harvester I love these old trucks. This one is in really good shape. Good night. It is in really good shape. Let's see what we got here. Oh no, the battery's dead. That's the worst. Smells like rats in here too. Darn. Pretty cool though, man. This, this baby doll is clean. Clean, clean, clean. Somebody gonna get a deal on that old truck. Super cool set of really antique coal planters. Check this out. Left and right sides. Heavy cast uh, press wheels. And you got your, your uh, ground drive here. Really cool. 45, 55 front assist. Let's see if it'll fire off. Interior needs, well, it just needs to be here. Most of the interior is missing. Mechanically, she's pretty sound. Uh, needs, right, yeah, dude, time I hit the key. Time I hit the key. She needs a little paint. A little bit of love, but that baby right there, she's ready to do some work. We filmed one of these last year. You don't see these that often around here. Here's a Deutsch. Last year, I got the Deutsch to crank up, but we couldn't get it to shut off. This one got a little custom. Check that exhaust. It's all stilt. <laughs> heated. It's a heated stilt. That's, oh, I, this ain't gonna crank the battery sitting here with no, no connections. Hmm. Pretty neat. What would the purpose be of a side loader like this? I mean, a side picker like this. Oh, ha having the tongue yeah. all set. I got you. Rocky made a good observation here. The a modest 9997 here has 
the cylinder right here and you see the uh the tongue is offset it's not it's not in the center if you see us pull them six row machines the 2100s 2110s the tongue is right in the middle and you're taking six rows it's three wind rows but six rows is two rows on the outside two rows in the middle two rows on the outside well this machine is only taking four rows instead of six rows so it's two rows and two rows and so the tractor has always got to be straddling two and two on the outside so you may need you gotta you gotta be able to shift it side to side because you with six you're, you're straddling the you're middle straddling the middle this but one. with four you're not straddling the middle because yeah. it's the way they're planted you know you're not you're not getting the two and one on your side you're getting two on the left or two on the right That's got him a cage around his air conditioner up top what's the odds rock what's the odds on this machine cranking Battery's connected. We got we got a we got a battery and it's connected. I think it'll crank. Think it'll crank. Let's check it out. Oh Lord and mercy. Well, door the door crank. hinges because of the tire. You ever seen you ever seen something like this? That's for us fat people. Holy moly. Oh, oh man. This is at the very beginning of when they had cabs. Is this the first cab tractor ever made? Let's see. Well, I got juice there. I'm clutched. Let's get in neutral. What's the problem? The throttle. The light's on, but it's something, something I'm not doing. Is there a pull stop? The pull stop, I think, is here, maybe. What is not happening? Huh. I'm getting nothing. I'm lost. It's not it's not a green tractor, so I'm I'm a little lost on here. Oh man, you're gonna fall down getting out of this thing. Good gracious. This is one of the reasons I come to the sale. I love to see what other people have made, what they've how they've adapted stuff, modified it. We have a huge spreader here made out of an old truck. Got the differential there where Pito used to be. They've cut off the back of a big old truck to make a, a big spreader. And so a big heavy piece of equipment. How do you hook it up? With the smallest hitch pin you can find. Coulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda went a little bigger on the homemade hitch on the gigantic spreader check out one of these newer case tractors see what improvements they've made since the other cab door still got the same shape to it but yeah. it, ain't, it ain't folding back on the tire there's actually a fair amount of room in here buddy seat behind Huh, that's something. Hmm. Well, none of the case tractors seem to crank. Right there, right there. Oh, let's see here what's going on. Body, buddy. I don't know, something. Yeah, something doesn't happen there. We're gonna try this 4640 out. This tractor here will work. Good gracious, it's getting deep. Oh man, it's getting freaking deep out there. Oh. Okay, in here. I tell you what, the green tractors, they, they tend to fire off. The red ones don't crank up at the sale, but the green ones, if they got a battery in them, they're ready to do some work.
She ain't got pretty paint on her. But she ready to go, go to town. The, the, this is the thing I'm here to see today. The number one Uno thing. 47, 55, front assist. In mint, mint condition. I'm sitting in the cab on these uh, imported deers. It looks, for all intents and purposes, brand new. Let's see what kind of hours we're working in. Huh. It says. 7,400 hours. I don't know, man. It, it looks it looks new. It's been painted. That's rust paint with black paint on it. It has been touched up painted. Forty-eight fifty. There, I hadn't seen any forty-nine sixties here this year. There were several last year. That's all. Y'all know 496 is the greatest tractor ever made, but 4850 firing right off. On the first day of the sale, I got on a, a white uh, 270 field boss with a top, top on it. It fired right off. I didn't see this one here yesterday. This is a different one. The other one is over there. These tractors are not that common in our area. Pretty unusual to see two of them in running condition at, at the sale. That's not not normal at all. <sighs> Big fenders. This one's I think that one was a 270 also, but it, the, the fenders is different. It's a lot different year model something. That's a little bit different up here. Shift patterns the same. Hold on, get, where's a fuel at? Well, there we go. Now we're talking. Still stairs. Don't shift as easy as other does. It's kind of tight shifting, but she fires right off. Mm. Is it a stove up? Check this out. It's got the side steps for the There's wrong no side. Now. It's got the door on this side. Don't. No, no. It's just the bottom door. That is. Yes, so you can just get up on top of it. Yeah, that's unusual. You usually just had the battery box. You think she's gonna fire off? I don't know if I would or not. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Hey! hey. Nope. Inside's not that bad. Looks pretty good in here. This is a European import John Deere with a grapple, a homemade uh, grapple bucket on the front. This is all, you see, fabricated up. Somebody homemade this, this stuff. Um, they got all the hoses come back here and traditionally you would run them under the belly the whole way. 
and they would be into multiple remotes back here. One remote would take it up and down, one would maybe tilt it, and one would make it open and shut. They have instead only two remotes on this tractor, so that limits their functions. They hooked all the hydraulics into one remote. And they took the controls and run them under the door. Got the door wired half shut, half open all the time. That's a no-go. And so the controls come in through the gap there and come right here where you can operate the bucket. Holy moly. I think, man, you're, you're, you're letting weather get, you're letting weather get inside a cab tractor when you go that route. It, there's probably a, a better way they could have done this. I, I'm not a fan of how this was uh, rigged up with the door permanently open-ish on a cab tractor. Also, uh, rats are eating the roof, uh, so the rats that came in here and are eating the roof, they got in here because you left the door permanently wired open. You, it, it's got doors on it for a reason. You can't, you can't, man, y'all can't do this stuff like this. You can't do it. 1200 iron's on her right here. Oh, 6175R, boy, she's dying right there. Get him in right there. Got factory duo, got it all right there. Did him and give 150. Did 150 pounds on a thing. Did your boy again 7580. 80 pounds on a 90. Did 80 pounds on a damn 90. Now 100. Did 100 pounds on a damn 100. Entered in 10. Did 100, 17, 18, 14. Did 10. 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 Did 
so they can move it around the shop move around the shop without the wheels on it and of course without the front axle pretty neat i have not seen this before pretty cool This one's probably too far gone. Super cool. 9400. Dirt pan tractor. So this would be a, a, a pre-def, pre-regen tractor. Oh man, this is looking really good. Yeah. So the insides on this one is similar to the uh, old 8400s. A lot of a lot of y'all are familiar with. Super, super awesome tractor. This could actually be capable of doing a lot of work on the farm. Looks like they got a problem with the steer, not tilting but right now it's got those uh, dirt pan tires on it they're way too wide to make for traction you need some narrow row crop tires on it if you're going to take it to the field it's a beast though 12 row 12 row better 12 row strip till be no problem 40 foot disc no problem cool old tractor those those dirt pan tractors come off construction uh sites the inside of them is always in, in really good shape. Usually, the operator's been smoking, so it smells like cigarettes in, in dirt pan tractors for some reason. But they haven't been around farm labor. And so the insides are usually in very nice shape other than the smell of cigarettes. A lot, lot better upkeep on the inside of them than on the inside of farm tractor. The, the transverse of that is they've been pulling heavy dirt pans, so all yeah. them hours was spent loading that motor up so a little trade-off there i think that's gonna get it for me and rocky we're gonna head back to the house today i put in an online bid on, on the things i'm looking at there's still way too much farm equipment out here and too little time i think they're gonna get over here to some of this stuff we're looking at at like two o'clock in the morning and i'm not standing in the mud on a friday to two o'clock saturday morning so my 4755 over there i'll check in on the internet see what it goes for that's the baby doll that's the number one item at this sale we'll see what it goes for and uh the things i put bids in on we'll check them out and see if we want them hopefully we will i thank all y'all for watching hope to see you next time there's really evidently no rules in the parking lot we're trying trying to park in rows and people just parking caddy wampus in the rows Good gracious. Not sure how we're going to get out of here, but if y'all see me next time, I guess that means we got out of here.